Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to the Monday edition, the first day of broadcasting for us here at Bible Track Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. My Bible is open once again to the book of Leviticus. It is our plan to end our study and finish our study here in this Old Testament legal book, the book of Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 25. If you can reach over, pick up your own copy of God's Word and join me there, Leviticus chapter 25. And get something on which you can jot some notes. We will be giving an outline and making some things, I hope, very, very practical. I have a gospel tract in my hand. Now, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. They are an evangelism tool that enables you and I who know Christ to extend our witness to lost people by handing them a clear presentation of how to be saved from their sin. It's a gospel tract. I want to talk about how you can get a free sample packet of our gospel tracts here in just a moment. Well, let me lead into our study this way. If you are like me at all, you've heard many and many a sermon based upon the Sermon on the Mount. Now, in Jesus' sermon there, there's a section on worry. And I'm sure you've heard sermons about the worry section there. And the key part of that section where Jesus talks about worry, Jesus says, take no thought to your lives when it comes to issues like food, clothing, and physical apparel. Instead, Jesus says, seek first his kingdom. And Jesus said all these other items and issues he will deal with. Now, all that makes for great preaching and sermons. But brother and dear sister, it's tough to practice. You know it and I know it. Well, today in Leviticus 25, God gave the Old Testament Jews their own version of all that we read there in the Sermon on the Mount. For them, the Old Testament Jews, it was called the year of Jubilee. If you and I struggle to not worry over our day-to-day earthly needs, and maybe, just maybe, we're ready to understand how the Jews must have struggled living out the year of Jubilee. Now, join me, please, if at all possible, with an open Bible, Leviticus chapter 25, and let's struggle together over the worry issue today. Please stay tuned today. I have a gospel tract in my hand right now. Uh, By the way, the word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. And this particular gospel tract is entitled, We Are Grateful. We Are Grateful. This tract was written and designed to give to people who presently are or have served in the military and were being uh, grateful to them for their service. But do you realize how many people who have been in the military, particularly those who have been on a battlefield, put their life on the line? How many people think that, well, since I put my life on the line for my country, then God will give me special grace and enable me to be get into heaven a little more effectively. Well, friend, I'm grateful for military service, but you can't get to heaven by putting your life on the line for your country. There's only one way to heaven. It's through the merits of Jesus as he died on the cross, giving his life, shedding his blood to pay for the sins of the world. Here's a great tool. We're grateful. Please, At the end of the program, my announcer is going to come back on. He's going to be giving you three ways by which you can contact us with your name and address. We'll be glad to send you a complete sample packet, having one each of all of our English tracks in that, including this one, we're grateful. And just in case you can't wait to the end of the program, you can just go to our website and give us that information. Our web address is this, Bible Tracks. Inc. That word Inc. is I-N-C. BibleTracksInc.org. 
If your Bible's open to Leviticus chapter 25, let me begin reading at verse 1. It says this, And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Six years shalt thou sow thy field, and six years shalt thou prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land. Now jump to verse 8. It says, and thou shalt number seven Sabbath of years unto thee seven times seven years, and the space of the seven Sabbath years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month, and the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land, and ye shall hallow the fiftieth year, and proclaim liberty through all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. For time's sake, we're going to stop reading right there. Now, many people know well that the Jews had a Sabbath day every week. Many know also of the seven years when there was a Sabbath year every seventh year. As I read here the verses in verses 8 to 10, we saw there that every 50th year was an extra Sabbath year. And that year they had two Sabbath years in a row. Now, this chapter continues and contains the final instructions that God gave to Moses while he was still up on Mount Sinai right after the children of Israel came out of Egypt. And chapter 25 has really only two sections to it. The first one is short, verses 1 through 7, talk about the sabbatical year. Then verses 8 through 55, the big portion, talks about the jubilee year. The question we need to deal with right up front is this. It's the why question. Why in the world did God give the Jews such, well, such strange laws? Well, if you look, if your Bible's open to the last verse of the chapter of chapter 25, listen to what it says. I'm reading now. For unto me, that is the me here is Jehovah, for unto me the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord their God. You see, the sabbatical years every seven years and the jubilee year every 50th year were to be a reminder generation after generation that the people belonged to God and also that the land it was God's land, not theirs. They were stewards of God's land. It all belonged to God, and they belonged to God. Now, on those years when the land had rest, and there was to be no planting, and there was to be no harvesting, the people were reminded that God was in charge of their care. If your Bible is still open, look at verse 18. It says there, Wherefore, ye shall do my statutes, and keep my judgments, and do them, and ye shall dwell in the land safely, and the land shall yield her fruit, and ye shall eat your fill. Then jump to verse 21. It says, I, God says, I will command my blessing upon you. <laughs> That's pretty great stuff. Now, if your pen and paper are handy, quickly jot down a simple, simple outline based upon verses 8 through 55. All those verses deal with the Jubilee year. First of all, verses 8 to 34 talk about the importance, the importance of the Jubilee year. And then verses 35 to 55 deal with the impact of the Jubilee year. All right, let's take them one at a time. What was important about the year of Jubilee? Three basic things come out here. First of all, it was important because of its connection. Its connection. I am going to be using words beginning with the letter C. Its connection. The year of Jubilee was connected to the Day of Atonement. You see, the Day of Atonement made the people right with God spiritually. The year of Jubilee brought the land back in a right state 
with God. It was God's land. God took care of land. And even modern day farmers have learned the idea of giving fields rest every so often. So number one, it was important because of its connection. Secondly, it is important because as it relates to its cognition, its cognition, the year of Jubilee caused the people to be fully cognizant, fully understanding as to who really was in charge, who owned them, who owned the land. Frankly, I think they needed that information to be drilled into their peanut butter brains as much as you and I need to be reminded regularly who owns us as the people of God. Now, the third reason the Jubilee year was important is because of its conditions, its conditions. All Jewish slaves were to be set free no matter who owned them. All the land was to be so, uh, that had been sold because of people's having some economic hardships. All the land was returned to its rightful tribal owners. Quickly, let me turn our focus to the last segment of verses here, verses 35 to 55, which deals with the impact that the year of Jubilee had. What impact on the thinking and daily living of the people did the year of Jubilee have? Well, to answer that, let me give you three words, all beginning with the letter E, like in the word elephant. In verse 35, the word is exploit. One Jewish person was not to exploit another Jewish person. They were to treat each other with dignity. Secondly, based upon verse 37, the word is exact. The Jews could not exact profit from fellow Jews when they loaned them money. And then thirdly, the word is enslaved. One Jewish person could not make a slave out of a fellow Jewish person. That's talked about there beginning at verse 39 and going on. Now, do you notice what was going on here? God desperately, and well, let me put it this way, God deliberately gave the Jews certain laws and gave them specific events in their lives to cause them to say this, you know, God sure has been good and gracious to me. He's been good and gracious to our people. We have a merciful God who takes care of us. He loves and cares for us. But then their thoughts were to go on to say this, well, if God has treated me and our people with such grace and mercy and blessing, then how then should I treat my fellow Jews and then the people around me? God's plan, friend, was really simple. He wanted the Jews to grow in their likeness of him. Since God was gracious, since God was merciful, since God was a God of blessing, he wanted his people to be gracious and merciful and people who blessed others. Beloved, it's always been the goal of God, no matter the era, for the, those that follow him to be conformed into the image of who he is. Beloved, how are you doing with that? How is Mark Smith doing with that? How can you and I grow in our Christ likeness? Number one, we're going to have to be in the Word of God and know the Word, but that's not enough. Number two, we've got to implement, we've got to practice the Word, knowing they were supposed to have a year of Jubilee. Uh, if they didn't follow it, which they didn't, we're going to find out later on in the Old Testament, when they didn't obey, well, God spanked them pretty good. Friend, you and I who know Christ need to grow and to be like Christ, which means we're going to have to follow His Word and not just know His Word. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.